Howdy! It's once again time to look at the minis you sent in that I have now painted. First up from Lord Hedgepig is this old Lizardman Saurus warrior. You might have noticed him show up in the background of the White Dwarf 50 video, although he was actually painted for a future video and I've got a couple more in progress. I want to say he's from 5th edition, although I am, as ever, woefully unknowledgeable about Warhammer Fantasy, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Went with a less vibrant scheme than you usually see these models in, as I wanted to evoke a pre-90s look for reasons that will become apparent whenever the video he's actually painted for comes out. Next we have a 1995 Eversaur Assassin sent in by Rich. This lad has also shown up in a Codex Compliant, the last one to be precise. I decided to go with a dark blue bodysuit rather than black, and I'm glad I did since it allowed me to get much more depth out of it. Plus, there's something very second edition about dark blue and bronze to me for some reason. I think it's probably remembering the old Chaos boxes. If I'm honest, I kinda prefer this model to the modern one. I think it's that the modern one's base dominates it so much, whereas with this old one you're free to base it however you want. Although, I did just put him on a tactical rock, so I don't get any points for originality there. Also from Rich was the first big model of the video, a Rogue Trader Battle Wagon, which is a lovely model that I'm very grateful I got a chance to experience. Normally, I try and keep old models looking as close to their original form as possible, but since it needed a fair bit of TLC, was going to be used in my Rebel Grots, and it's not like heavily modifying battle wagons is unusual, I was happy to try and make this one look a little more modern. And it does clean up quite well, I think, fitting in shockingly well with models made decades later with the simple addition of a few details here and there. Probably helps that it has the mast, and Grot vehicles often have a vaguely nautical theme for some reason. Glad I was able to include a little stockpile of stolen Imperial stuff too, since I try and include a little bit of storytelling on the bigger models in my Grot Rebellion wherever possible. Also, if you're wondering how this compares to a modern battle wagon in terms of scale, it's shockingly close, to be honest. It's mostly just shorter, discounting the mast, but otherwise it's quite comparable. Now, since it's been a while since my last one of these videos, you might have been wondering on what I've been doing. So, let's spin the wheel to see which of the many projects that I flipped between has been the one that I've been focusing my time on. Ah, yep, okay, yep, my Rogue Trader Lamenters. And annoyingly, for this series anyway, most of the stuff that I've painted for them was stuff that I bought myself, so it wouldn't show up here. However, a few of them were sent into the P.O. box, and one of those was Brother Quiff, sent in by JPH. He may be familiar to those of you who've seen the earlier episodes in this series, since he shares a body with Brother A. Skull, who previously appeared. Although his unhelmeted head has one hell of a face on him. Like many Rogue Trader faces, you just have to try your best and hope you can wrangle their more cartoony faces into something that doesn't look too silly. And I think considering what I'm working with, I managed to pull it off. Mostly. Within acceptable parameters. And speaking of dodgy faces, we have Brother Dimshade, who was sent in by a generous unnamed soul. As a chainsword wielder, or at the very least a wielder of a dangerous set of hedge trimmers, he's been pressed into service in my death company and been given a 3D printed jump pack that's close enough to the originals. Dimshade has one of those faces where it's hard to tell what's going on with him until you've got some paint on there, with the wires and glasses and tubes leading to a pretty messy looking thing, which is why I didn't notice that that big blob wasn't supposed to be there until I looked at some catalogue pictures of the model after I'd already painted the face. To be fair, it wouldn't be the first time I've lent into a miscast on one of these models, so just pretend it's supposed to be there, okay? Oh, and although the Beaky themselves was one I bought, the missile launcher on this guy was sent in by Spons, so I thought I should mention that. The last one today is a big one, both as a personal thing and physically. This is a 1988 Land Raider sent in by British Red Fox, and I am a little smitten with it. I've wanted an original Land Raider for a long while now, so actually having the chance to not only paint one but to build it was a real treat. 
It is a bit delicate since the original designers thought it should have not one, not two, but four easily breakable and therefore easily losable parts. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with it, which is also why I ended up putting a magnet in the aerial as I knew that was the first thing that would snap if I didn't. Much like the old Rhino chassis, I think there's something very pleasant looking about this old vehicle. It has a certain pleasing simplicity that takes very well to stark edge highlighting, which is lucky for me since that's how I paint. Not entirely sure who, if anyone, this thing will taxi around the board, kind of tempted to throw some Terminators in there, which would give me an excuse to grab some more old Terminators. Hmm. Leave it with me. Anyway, that is what I have painted from the P.O. Box recently. Not that many models in terms of raw numbers, but there is a couple of big ones in there. Massive thanks to everyone who sent these minis in, it is wildly appreciated. And I shall try and leave it not quite so long next time. But until then, cheerio.